If you're looking for a solid B550 board, you've come to the right video. MSI's B550 Gaming Carbon is a well-built uh, board with overkill VRMs, 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6, and of course, PCIe Gen 4 support as well. Let me walk you through it. Let's see how well it does and how, how well it holds up against those high core count Ryzen chips. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now let's start with the important bit, the VRMs. MSI has stepped up the game here with an incredibly overbuilt solution for even the highest end 16 core 3950X. The setup here is a 12 plus 2 plus 1 phase design, which is kind of incredible. They use an IR35201 controller along with, and I'm going to have to read this one, uh, 12 TDA21462 drivers. Each are rated for 60 amps, which if you combine that all together, and let's say that you're running your CPU at 1.2 volts, that's just shy of 900 watts available to the CPU, which is a just way overkill for the, what, 150 that the 3950X needs. So definitely, definitely overbuilt. Now, as you'd expect, and also thanks to the incredibly large heat sinks, especially on the left-hand side of the, the tall side of the chipset, uh, where the heat sink is actually the entire rear IO shield, the rear IO cover, and um, that entire thing is, a, I believe, an aluminium heat sink, which is impressive. But thanks to that and the overbuilt VRMs, they sat at between 40 and 50 degrees C under full 100% synthetic load, or actually rendering load with Blender uh, with a 3900 and 3950X as well. Both of these chips performed very well, boosted to their full boost speeds as you would expect. And so if you're looking again for a well-built and solid board for even these higher core count chips, this doesn't seem like a bad option. Right, so you can throw any chip you want at it, but what about the rest of the features? Well, of course it does support PCIe Gen 4, although like all the B550 boards, it's a bit more complicated than just it supports it. It only supports it to the top X16 slots and to the top M.2 slots, which go directly to the CPU, as you can see in this block diagram. But otherwise, everything else that's on the board from your other M.2 slot to actually the other X16 slot, despite PCIe uh, bifurcation being allowed on B550 now, and the X1 slots, all go through the chipset, which has a Gen 3 link, meaning if you were to use, say, uh, a network card and an M.2 SSD in the second slot, you would be bottlenecking them ever so slightly. Now, for the vast majority of people, that doesn't matter, but it's important to note as that's the layout of pretty much any B550 board that you can check out. If you want more PCIe Gen 4 support, then you're gonna have to step up to the X570 platform, which does have Gen 4 to the chipset, and therefore more lanes, more speed available to it. Now, CPU support-wise, it's important to know that this board and any other B550 board will not actively support any second or first gen Ryzen chips, only the third gen Ryzen chips. And when I say third gen, I mean anything based on the Zen 2 architecture, which means the Athlons and the APUs that are currently out, at least at the time of filming, so the 32 and 3400G chips, are not supported. Now you may be able to get it to boot or even run with a second or first gen chip, but it's not actively supported. And so I would generally recommend going with the B450 board, which are cheaper anyway, if you have one of those chips. IO-wise, it's pretty decently kitted out. Like I said at the start, you have Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 gig Ethernet, with the Wi-Fi being an Intel controller and the Ethernet being a Realtek one. You have your usual assortment of USB ports, including USB 3.2, Gen 2, great names I know, and Gen 1 and USB 2, as well as even a PS2 combo keyboard and mouse port, should you need one. And of course, a 7.1 audio with SPDAF, powered by this massive thick boy, which is basically just a Realtek ALC 1220 like every other motherboard on the planet, but this one has a chunker of an RF shield. Moving on to the BIOS, it's pretty much the same one you find on any motherboard from the last couple generations. It's well laid out, it's really easy to use. In fact, I actually prefer this BIOS as a, a user-friendly setup over pretty much any other BIOS. Um, the boot priority menu slider is fantastic and the, the ability to enable XMP or XMP profiles from the home screen with simple toggle switches 
is a great point. Otherwise, if you want to overclock, especially for your advanced memory timing settings, that is all in the advanced settings and is pretty easy to do. It's all in one big page with a few sub menus. So again, big thumbs up there. And that's that really. It's a good board. It's well built. It's solid. It's got a good feature set. But unfortunately, because of the B550 Premium, it costs a lot more than a B450 Carbon, for example. This one is currently listed for £215, which is up from £140 on a B450 Carbon. That's a pretty big deal and can mean that a lot of people who are looking for a, you know, this level of board, this tier of board, are now being priced out and having to go down a tier or potentially two. Now, this seems to be because of the PCI Gen 4 support and the, the uprated VRMs, but realistically, I'm hoping that as B550 becomes more common, pricing will come down a bit. So, Fingers crossed there. I think that for the vast majority of people, going with B550 right now doesn't make all that much sense. Sure, you get PCI Gen 4 support, but honestly, for the well, vast majority of people, that doesn't really matter. You can't really make use of it, and it's only some very niche use cases that can, so realistically, I don't think that should be a, a deciding factor in your purchasing decision. And unless you really don't want to do a, an irreversible BIOS change to a B450 board to support 4th gen Ryzen, Again, I don't quite see a reason to, to upgrade or to go with B550 over the currently much cheaper B450. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the gaming carbon? What do you think of B550 in general? And especially on the pricing note as well, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now if you'd like to check out the B550 carbon, then I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. Otherwise, you can also check out that subscribe button for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I've got some ASUS B550 boards here to review as well, and a whole load of other stuff as well, including even the Intel B460 board, essentially the Tomahawk from MSI, so I'll be checking that out too. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, there are a load of links in the description you can check out for merch, for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other cool designs. There's also a load of VPN options, Overclockers UK affiliate links if you're buying from there, and just a whole lot of other stuff too, so feel free to check that out. Otherwise, I'm going to leave some more videos on the end cards for you to check out, but that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.